Okay, welcome back to part three of this series. Um, in this video, we're going to add a command to enable and disable our Super Pickaxe plugin that we created. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So, what we need to do is define our command in our plugin.yml file um, before we actually use it, you know, in our code. Um, so, what we just need to do is something very similar to uh, the permissions sort of block. We need to add a commands block, like so. And this needs to be. Is that four? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, inside this block, we need to list our commands essentially. So, the name of the command we're going to enter. Uh, what we're going to have people enter is going to be um, well. Let's have two. Let's have sp on and sp off for super pickaxe on and off. So um, let's create two commands. The first one being sp on. Mm, that looks weird. Pick on. Yeah, that's okay. So I'll have pick on and pick off. So we need to define a description. Uh, for this command, which is going to be enables the super super pick, I'll do, and then we need to define the usage, which is just something that is shown in the sort of help screen. Except I spelt it wrong um, twice. There we go. So this is just going to be slash sp on, which just tells people no, it's not. It's going to be slash pick on. It just tells people how to actually use the command. That's, so this is essentially what they will actually type in their chat window. So we just need to define the other one, which is going to be pick off. And the description of this is going to be disables the super pick. Disables. Disables. Okay. And the usage of this is going to be slash pick off, which again is just how they type it. Um, so this is very similar to the commands, uh, sorry, the permissions thing. Um, if you do want to add permissions you know, to use these commands, you just need to do that in the way we did before, um, by adding a separate block for permissions, and then um, you know, when they execute the command to check to see if they're allowed, execute the command, check to see if they're allowed by just doing player has permission. Um, but again, I won't be covering that in too much detail in this video, or in this series, or at all. OK, so now that we have defined the permissions in our plugin.yml file, we can um, add the sort of code to handle them being used. So the way we do this is by going to our um, uh, main class file, and we add another method similar to onEnable and onDisable, Oops. except this one is called onCommand. And this is called whenever a player enters a command on the server. Um, so it has to be public and its type has to be a boolean and its name is on command like so and this takes a whole heap of parameters oops the first one being the something called the command sender uh, command com comnad mm. um, I'm just going to call this sender and this is you know who sent the command so this is either a player or a terminal you know the console uh, second one is a type command, like so, and we're going to call this one CMD, short for command, obviously. The next one is the is a string, and its name is going to be label, which is something we won't actually use. The next one is string array, and this is the arguments, so args. So that's all the parameters defined. Um, now these two things just need to be imported, so we'll just import that and that, like so. Um, and again, this has just gone red, underlined, the entire thing has, because it doesn't actually return a boolean. Um, and this uh, method needs to return true if your plugin has handled the command that um, has been sent to it, and false if not. So if it has handled it, you return true, and then the server stops checking methods for that command, um, and just sort of, you know, moves on to the next one or does something else. Um, if it returns false, it will you know pass that command on to another plugin. Um, so by default, we want to just return false, like so, 
and what we want to do is check to see if um, the plugin, sorry, the command that was entered is the is one of the ones we wanted. So what we can do is check if command get name equals to ignore case, which is, sorry equals ignore case, which is just something provided you know, by Java. Um, so this will just make the method, sorry, the um, command case insensitive. Um, so the, one of the two commands that we had was pick on, which turns on the super pickaxe mode. So if it is that, we want to, you know, do the code for that command. Else, if, then we check for the other command, which we do by doing command get name, essentially the same thing. Get name equals ignore case. And this is going to be pick off, like so. There we go. So these commands are only really going to be um, sort of appropriate for um, players. If you try and enable super pickaxe from the console, it doesn't really make any sense. So what we need to do is check to see if the command sender is a player and not a console, you know. So what we do is check to see if it is, well, if it's not a player basically. And the way we do that is by doing if sender, and we need to check to see if it's an instance uh, of the player class. So, um, well, essentially the command sender can be either a player or, you know, a console. Um, so just by checking if sender is an instance of a player, um, we will determine that uh, it is a player and not anything else. So to check the opposite, we just add equals false. Um, and what we want to do here is just essentially stop all of our code, which we will do by returning true, because we have handled this command. Um, but we're also going to log a message by using our log message method. So this log message, and the message is going to be the um, sp on, no, that's what I had before, the pick on command can only be used in game. Can. There we go. So that will just tell whoever's looking at the console they can't use that command from the console. And we want to do the same thing so for the other command, so I'll just copy this and paste it down, except we want this to be pick off. Easy enough. Okay, so carrying on with the pick on method, what we want to do if um, the, you know, so we want to get the, okay, what we want to do is add, um, well, we want to turn on super pickaxe mode, but only for the player that entered the command. So the problem is that say you had like three players on the server, and one of them wanted to use super pickaxe mode and the other two didn't, um, say one person turns on super pickaxe mode, if you just use a single value, so it, you know, certain super pickaxe equals true, um, then the other, th all three players, the other two players as well, would um, you know have it enabled without them really wanting to. So you need to store the result. Um, you need to store um, sort of true or false for every player on the server. And we're not actually going to be doing that exactly. What we're going to do is store a list of players that do have it enabled. Um, so what we're going to do is just well, we're going to. You know, here we're going to add the player to that list and here we're going to remove them from that list and we'll also add some checks to see if there is sorry to see uh, to see if it's already enabled or already disabled and just show an error message in the chat so to define well the list that we're going to be using is going to be an array list which I have mentioned before so I'm not going to cover that too much and it's going to be a property of our main class so our super pick class is going to have this property so just under our listeners I'm going to create a new public uh, property. Its type is going to be an array list. And you can think of this essentially as a slightly more flexible array. Um, the type within the array, so you know, the list, each item in the array, the array list, is going to have the type string. And the name of this uh, property is going to be, um, let's see, let's call it active players. Active four, active four players. Hmm. Okay, active players. Doesn't really matter too much, does it? 
So now we've defined that, we need to give it a value, which is going to be a new, so essentially an empty array list of the same type, like so. And this will just need to be imported. So import from Java util and not any of the others. And you can see they have now disappeared. So down here, what we need to do is check to see if the player's name is already in this list. Um, and if it is, we'll just show them a little error message. So we can get the player's name, um, and we're going to store it as a variable because we're going to use it a few times. So we're going to create a new variable here, which is going to be a type of a string. And the name of this variable is going to be player name. And this is going to be equal to, um, well, what we need to do is, um, at the moment, we've checked to see if the sender isn't a player. Um, so this check will work, however, down here we're still working with the raw sort of sender object. So what we need to do is change this so that it actually represents a player and not just a sender, command sender. So we could do that just by casting the command sender to a player, like so. So we can do player, sender, and this here, this thing, will essentially return, if you like, um, the player that has sent the command, that's used the command. Um, however, we don't want to store that, we just want their name. So what we can do is wrap this in more brackets, like so, and then use get name, like so. So that's sort of a little sort of neat trick, really, to be able to sort of shorten code, because otherwise you'd have to store this as another variable. Um, so there you go, there's a little tip for you. Um, if you're familiar with Java, you'd know that already, but there you go. So what we need to do now is check to see if the player name is in that array list that we just defined up top. So we can do a simple check. So if this active players contains and then the player name. And if it does contain that, we're going to return true to sort of to oh, return true to sort of stop our code if you like. And then we're going to just show a little error message here. Um, actually, we do need the player. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. We need the player, the actual instance of the player, to send them a message. Um, so instead of just doing this little brackets thing, we need to define this as an actual variable that we can then use. So I'm just going to delete all this here, and then just above, I'm going to create a new variable which is going to be type of player, and its name is going to be player. And this is going to be equal to the command sender, but cast to a player, like so, which is basically what I just did. And then down here, on this, where we get the name, we can just use the player variable I just created. Okay, so then here, we can use the player to send the message saying, no, it's already enabled, it's not being silly. So we can just do player send message, which is there. And then we just send them a string, send them a string. Um, so this is going to be, uh, you already have the pick enabled or maybe super pick super pick that should be like that I don't know doesn't really matter um, and we can make this colored so we'll just make it red by using the chat color and we'll just use um, dark red because it looks nicer we'll just add that on like that okay so that's that that will just send a message saying you already you already have the super pickaxe enabled um, you know, if they do um, so if they don't we'll sort of carry on and um, because this return true will sort of stop the code essentially so down here we can just add them to the list ie enabling the super pickaxe so we can just do this active players um, add which will just add something to the end of the array list and this is the player name that we want to add like so there we go. That should now allow that should now allow people to enable the super pickaxe with the slash pick on command. So we need to do essentially the same thing for the um, disabled um, pick off command. So we can just go ahead and copy this down here, and then we just need to make a few little changes. Um, so we can. Um, well, the player and the player name are got in the same way, but we need to check if they have it off here. So we'll just do equals false, and we can have um, 
change already to don't, so you don't have the super pick, in it, pick enabled. And instead of adding, we want to remove, which will just remove them from the array list. Um, it doesn't really matter if you remove something that doesn't exist, or if you add something that is already on the list. Um, it will just appear twice. Um, and removing it will just remove the first one, I think. I think there's also a remove all, but you can check that yourselves. Um, so yeah, that's essentially the command sort of setup. So what we can do is just quickly test this out and by exporting the plugin. Hopefully my game won't crash this time. So we'll just start the server up. And we shouldn't get any errors. Fingers crossed. Um, nope, doesn't look like it. So the server is started up. So just go across to the game and connect. So now I'm here, and there's those drops that were created, so that is working. And you can collect them. Oop, nether portal. Um, so now if I use the sp on, com no, if we use the pick on command, you see we just get pick on, which is a little bit weird. Um, so I'll have to check why that is. Um, but I guess I will just point out that it does actually work by just breaking some blocks. So yeah, crafting table. So, um... Right, so that's essentially that. Um, let me just work out why it's saying pick on. Okay, so sorry for that horrendous jump cut and whatever that noise was. Um, the reason we got the pick on message was that, that was actually the help information. If you remember in our plugin.yml, um, we had slash pick on like this um, under our usage. So that's what, what was actually being displayed. Um, so maybe, that maybe you, know, you should put like usage slash pick on or something a bit more useful. Uh, that really confused me. <laughs> uh, my own fault for picking a silly message, I guess. So the only the reason that was happening is because we weren't telling the server that we had handled the command. We were returning false, which essentially means show the help information. Um, so the problem was we just needed to return true here um, to tell it that we had we had dealt with this command, and also for the off command as well, like so. Or um, wait, what? Return. There we go. So now that should have no problems. Um, and thinking about it, it might be sensible to add an enabled message. So you see, we have an error message saying it didn't work. We can have F1 saying here that it did work. So just under here, we can add the same thing. So player send message. Uh, let's just say super pick enabled. And we'll make this green because green means good. So let's just call it, do this as chat color uh, green. So there. And then just add that on like that. And a semicolon. Um, and then we can just copy this down for the disabled, disabled, disabled message like so. So we can test this out once more just by exporting the plugin. Just hit finish and start the server. I actually removed all the plugins. It's been quite a while trying to work out why that wasn't working quite right. I deleted all the plugins except this one. I thought it was like some sort of weird conflict, but it wasn't. So let's just join the testing server. And let's try again. So we do pick on. And now you see we just have super pick enabled with no silly information. And if we do pick off, super pick disabled. Although if I just click something, you'll see that it actually does still work. Um, and that's obviously because we haven't implemented the check to see if the person has the you know the pick enabled yet. So what I'll do is just quit from the server before I get creepered and stop the server. And let's go to our um, well actually I think I'll end this here um, because we have sort of essentially added the commands. In the next part, we'll just sort of tidy up our listener. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, and sorry it's been a bit chaotic, but hopefully this has made sense.